YouTube and Google are under intense scrutiny over Chinese state media sponsored ads that are spreading misinformation about the protesters in Hong Kong. So these ads are linked to CCTV, China Central Television, which fund which is funded by the Chinese government. Hong Kong supporters are calling on YouTube to stop CCTV from running any ads on YouTube. Both Twitter and Facebook had been called out earlier and they made decisions to take these ads down. So let me give you the details. This is from Twitter safety or from Twitter and it's a safety official statement. Um, these accounts were deliberately and specifically attempting to sow political discord in Hong Kong, including undermining the legitimacy and political positions of the protest movement on the ground. Based on our in, uh, intensive investigations, we have reliable evidence to support that this is a coordinated state backed operation. And then you have the head of cybersecurity from Facebook. This individual also released a statement. Today we removed seven pages, three groups and five Facebook accounts involved in coordinated inauthentic behavior as part of a small network that originated in China and focused on Hong Kong. Although the people behind this activity attempted to conceal their identities, our investigation found links to individuals associated with the Chinese government. And I just want to remind you all that Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, all of these are banned in mainland China. I don't know. I think this is actually a hard question. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't, I'm not sure what you guys think. But um, because CCTV is state TV, it's true, but so is uh, RT, and you might think, and okay, that's for the Russians. Uh, but so is Al Jazeera. So is so it's the BBC. BBC right. Exactly, right? And, and look, uh, a lot of our uh, stations, they might disagree internally. MSNBC, Fox News, and CNN, but do they have a purely American perspective? Definitely, right? But and, and are often quite one-sided. So before you guys comment, though, I think it's important to show examples because it's different from, you know, from what you would see from RT or from Al Jazeera, right? And I don't want anybody to mistake what I'm saying. Of course, it's different, and it's a it's a government that doesn't have democracy, dictatorial in that sense. And so do they do a coordinated propaganda? Of course they do. Right, and also just completely slander the protesters and misrepresent who they are and what they do. So in one of these ads, they literally compared protesters in Hong Kong to ISIS. So let's take a look at that and I'm gonna do a rough translation that says, Things the yellow media and yellow media represents the protesters won't tell you. When there is a cooperation between thugs and journalists, what you see is not news, okay? So in one of the other ads, they will shoot to kill with a slingshot. They almost killed a man at the airport. They took a nurse's right eye. They are Hong Kong cockroaches. So this is the kind of stuff that you're gonna see. I know, but this is identical to what Trump says about he says Antifa is a terrorist organization. He says it's fake news, you know, yellow news that's covering yeah. it. So are we going to ban Trump? I'd love that. See, I think see that's there's, great. There's, there's another dimension of this. First of all, I tend to, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lack of clarity here, okay, in the reporting. I'm just going to be, the Verge article here, verge.com, uh, makes it sound uh, not like they're running ads like this, but as if China TV, CCTV, is running its own ads that say these terrible things under the name China TV. But this other report says people are using false identities. I think you have to come down on people using false identities. But if Chinese state TV is saying things, however horrible, uh, that hew to the line of what you'd expect Chinese state TV to do, then they're, uh, they've already disclosed who they are. And I get, uh, and by the way, it's further complicated by the fact that the National Endowment for Democracy, which is a government organization, you can go to their webpage. I did before the show, and they talk about the hundreds of thousands that are investing in the democracy movement. That doesn't mean the democracy movement in Hong Kong isn't valid and right, but uh, you know, when you start asking corporations mm -hmm. to arbitrate speech among individuals, speech on behalf of countries, I get extremely uncomfortable with that kind of corporate censorship. I mean, that makes me No, I uneasy. get it, I get it. But I also get frustrated at the inaction and the 
like the conversation screeches to a halt where it's like, well, people are gonna be censored, so we can't do anything. Like, we gotta remember, we might be skeptical of things we come across on the internet, but the vast majority of people are not skeptical. They'll come across something like that and they'll think, oh, yeah, obviously, the Hong Kong protesters are the same as ISIS. Yeah. And that creates a dangerous situation because some people might see that and they might be. You know, mentally against the Hong Kong protesters as a result. But then there are people who get paranoid about things like that. So listen. And actually carry out violence against protesters because they think they're members of ISIS. So there needs to be a better answer. I don't know what that answer is. Well, look, no one does. And, and to be fair to YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, it is an incredibly difficult question. Because I actually think that the distinction that Richard made is perfect. So if someone's using a fake identity, that is a good you know, violation of terms of service and a good reason to block them, okay? They're not being, they're being disingenuous in, in who they are pretending to be, right? But if it's someone who is honest and says, look, I'm Chinese TV, I'm Russian TV, I'm, you know, I'm British TV, then I think you gotta let them say it. And so these are hard lines to draw. But it is their job to draw them. I know they're gonna get heat no matter what from all different sides. In this case, I'm not saying the Chinese TV or the Chinese propaganda is, is correct. It's terribly wrong. And I wanna be absolutely clear, my perspective is I'm 100% on the side of the protesters. I'm not in the false equivalencies. I'm not like, oh, I'm just gonna be neutral. No, we don't do that here. We have perspective. My perspective is that the protesters are right, okay? Now, having said that, if we start, if the platforms start blocking state televisions and other perspectives they don't agree with, that is a dangerous road to go down. Yeah, so, that's my main, and by the way, I support the protesters too. I wasn't suggesting otherwise, but for example, what do you do if the Chinese TV station network says on YouTube, they're taking money from the Americans, which is true. I mean, I support them, but they are taking, then is that something you censor them for? I just worry, I mean, I think the way you combat lies best of all is with truth. We've been doing that for 12, I mean, I've been doing it here for 12 years. It ain't working, it ain't working. Well, I it would argue working, it is Jay. working. Like, the whole I'm progressive, the whole, the whole no. millennial and Gen Z generation is progressive. It's and it's not, not of the course whole not millennial just, generation. No, it's 80%. So the 20%, yes, are, can be quite monstrous, but we have won the culture wars in a lot of ways. And it's not just because of the Young Turks, obviously, right? Although I would say no, we the are zero part of it. hour had a lot to do with it. The zero yeah. hour had. A, yes, that's right. right. Richard's they, program they, zero they, hour, huge part of it. But, but seriously, the internet culture of uh, has has won in a lot of ways. We're seeing because of Trump, etc. And 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 now the the bad guys are counterattacking, but they're counterattacking after we've already moved a generation of Americans and throughout the world in being far more progressive. So it's. I hear you, Anna, it is, it's oftentimes deeply discouraging to see this nonsense just, propaganda. But I also just wanna be fair and say, yeah, are the Chinese government doing propaganda that's full of lies? 100%. But does the American government do the same by calling protesters terrorists, saying you could run over protesters, doing that on behalf of oil companies, etc.? Yes, we often do that. We label almost every enemy we have terrorists, whether they actually did terrorism or not. And then we have allies that are doing terrorism, we go, no, that doesn't count. So then what are you gonna do, ban it. the American government? No, I look, I get what you're saying and I understand like the giant flaws in this approach and I'm not trying to defend it. But what I'm trying to say is that what we have set up right now and, and all right, I'll concede that in terms of this culture war, the, the type of programming from progressive outlets like ours have done a pretty good job. But my point is, bad actors have co-opted the very movements that we've used to kind of build the type of activism that we're seeing now. And they're, they have absolutely no rules. They have no morals, no ethics, no principles. So they will put anything and everything out there. It's a well-orchestrated, well organized uh, you know, assault on truth. And I, I'm just tired of telling myself all the warm and fuzzy stories about how we're truth tellers and it's working. There are people out there who think all sorts of nonsense because of the propaganda from the right. And we need to find a way to combat that. I don't know what the answer is, that's my point, I don't know. 100% agree with you and my only point is this, that we definitely need to find a way 
But, and I, it, you know, maybe t to you it sounds like a knee jerk lefty reaction or something, but I guarantee you that if we give that power to this government and the corporations that run our economy, it's people like us that will be the losers. Mm -hmm. It's not I, I gonna totally be, agree you with know, yeah. and, and so I'm just saying I, I agree with your assessment of the problem. I just think we need to figure out a solution that is other than. Uh, relying on the generosity of uh, the people who own Google. I just don't think, first of all, I don't think they're capable of it, we, even with the best of intentions. And secondly, I think they've got conflicting motives. I think it's gotta be a democratic process. We gotta figure, we have to figure this out together. Yeah, and look, there's a lot of no-win situations out there. Uh, and, and that's why, to some degree, I have sympathy for these platforms. Uh, but uh, also, look, it, they, they put out these lies all over the internet, et cetera. But it, well, the alternative in the past was to put the gatekeepers in, and the gatekeepers of the establishment kept out anyone who wasn't in favor of the status quo. Right. So it's a lose lose in that sense. Last thing is, guys, I know it's a painful and hard process, but look, overall, again, we're, we be, we've begun to win, right? So Bannon's gone, Alex Jones is gone, Milo is gone, R Dave Rubin is deeply humiliated and embarrassed all over the internet. Ben Shapiro is now uh, getting pulverized. And, it, it, and, and more, why? Because they're being exposed. So it's a long term game and the Young Turks have been here for 17 years, right? And, and we've earned the trust of the audience. And so we just gotta keep on fighting and give you guys the facts and uh, and, and do the best we can under these circumstances, and so these platforms, and and they've got to, they can't bring the gatekeepers back. If you put the establishment back in charge, that doesn't help anybody.